Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to take digitized color negative photos. This is uh, photos you would have as a color negative strip that you've digitized using a DSLR to obtain a RAW file. And I'm going to show you a RAW file workflow for converting digitized color film into a properly colored positive. <laughs> So if you've ever tried to digitize color film just by photographing the negative, it can be really hard to get the image correct. You can invert it, now you've got this horrible blue cast because of the negative's red base. You can auto balance the colors. Nope, that doesn't do any good whatsoever because the camera recorded the image as it should be. We can adjust the curves. Let's see what we can do here. So if you just have a JPEG, it's really difficult to get a positive image from a DSLR digitized negative. I do not want to save that. So let's take two, two photos from the same roll of film, okay? I'm going to take two somewhat similar photos and I'm going to show you what the process is for achieving a positive image from a color negative digitization. So here's our, our first one. This one we haven't done anything with yet. Let's turn it up right. This one is properly edited to look like a normal and good photo. So if we want to make this one look good because it's a negative, first thing we've got to do is make it a positive, right? So let's do that right here. Now we have the issue we had inverting it just as a JPEG. It's super blue. Now the advantage to having a raw version of this is that there is something we can actually do about that now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the color temperature. Now this was a negative. We're still technically working with a negative, which means all of the, all of the sliders are going to work in reverse. So if we instinctively make this yellow to counter out the blue, all we're going to do is make it more and more blue. So we've got to drag it over here into the blue spectrum to introduce yellow into the image. Because what we're actually doing is introducing blue to the yellow base. So this is countering out the yellow base of the negative and giving it a natural coloration. 2450 looks pretty good. I'm guessing that's pretty close to the one that I did earlier. Pretty close. 2500 was the color temperature I used earlier. 2450 is close enough for YouTube work. I'm going to drop the tint a little bit. I want to add a little bit of magenta to this, but not much. So I'm just going to make it plus 10 instead of plus 12. Uh, everything else we're going to do is going to be in these four highlight, shadow, white, and black sliders. These are going to do everything for us. The whites and blacks are going to do the real heavy lifting. The, what, the highlight and shadow sliders are going to control contrast. We don't want to mess with the exposure and contrast settings here, assuming that the exposure you obtained when you digitized this was correct. So I'm going to show you if we jack this all the way to the right, it introduces a whole lot of contrast. If we bring it down to the left, it reduces it. I'm going to introduce contrast in the highlights because introducing highlight contrast on the negative introduces shadow contrast in the positive. That's why you can see here I'm introducing contra uh, brightness into the highlights and the shadows are getting darker. Same thing is true with the shadows. Making the shadows darker will brighten the highlights. Making them lighter will darken the highlights. So I don't want to have this much darkness in the highlights. I want to have it a little bit like this. I don't want the highlights to be blown out. So this looks pretty good to my eye. Now here's where the magic is going to happen. I'm going to adjust the slider to introduce brightness to the whites. Ooh, and there we go. Now what happens is as we're adjusting the, the whites and darks here, you can see the histogram up top that's also changing the color profile of the image. So I think that the contrast and the tonality here is pretty good, but we've added a whole lot of blue we need to take out. So I'm going to drop this to 2100. That's too low. Make it 2250. Oh, we've gotten back to a fairly normal looking skin tone with fairly green greens. Now let's work with the blacks here, and you can see that this is adjusting the highlights. So I kind of like the idea of having a bluer sky. 
So I'm going to bring some lightness into the negative highlights. We can also adjust the saturation a little bit to kind of correct some of the coloration. Like now, here we go. Negative 20 saturation has some pretty normal looking skin tones here, given that this photo was taken with the subject's face in the shade. Increase and decrease vibrance. I tend to leave that alone most of the time and add some add some sharpness as well to bring out some details and correct for some of the raw softness. And you can see that the results end up being pretty natural. So one thing you can do, one of the nice things about raw is once you get one photo on a roll that you really like the look of, you can just synchronize the rest of them. And from there, you've got the ability to now take these into Photoshop as more editable images and do things like clean up some of the, the damage to the negative here that you can see. Uh, it's this stray mark here that was apparently on my sensor. So take a look at these settings over here. And if you're using a red-based color negative, this is going to be pretty close to the settings you'll find will, that will work for, for most situations. If you're using uh, something like a Kodak Gold 200, which has a greenish base to it, these, the settings for that will be significantly different. So let's open these images. And of course, once you've got these opened, now you can do some things like auto color, auto contrast, sharpen them, and really make some of the colors pop. And that is a pretty good looking result.